In this video, we'll go over proper installation procedures for the original NAI product line. The original NAI product line is a set of high-quality navigational aids developed for dependable operation in the harshest offshore environment. They live in challenging circumstances, encountering large temperature fluctuations, high UV exposure, strong winds, hail, rain, and saltwater spray, just to name a few. Proper installation is important to ensure reliable performance. The original NAI product range includes the following five products. The LED 160 NAI nautical lantern signals an obstruction to mariners at nighttime or during poor visibility. The light must be visible to vessels up to a distance of 5 nautical miles. The ALS 400 NAI is an LED floodlight used to eliminate the large daytime ID markings on the turbine. This is especially important for orientation during nighttime operations. The ALS 450 NAI is an LED floodlight that illuminates the boat landing platform. Mounting is the same as the ALS 400 however upside down. This enables vessels to safely approach a wind turbine at night. The ALS 500 NAI is a high-performance LED floodlight that illuminates a large part of the wind turbine tower. The lights are used to create a landing path, or corridor, among multiple turbines for helicopters to approach the helipad on the offshore substation. The GPS NAI is the only product in the series without a light and is used to synchronize the devices through the wind farm. All original NAI devices use the NAVAID interface field bus, which we call NAI. The field bus provides power and communication between the Parkmaster server and all devices. The marking light control system, which we call MLCS, is located in a switch cabinet in the tower. The cabinet holds the NAI controller as well as batteries for power backup should mains power be lost. We standardize the electrical and mechanical interfaces throughout the product range for easy installation and service. All products have the same footprint. The four insulated mounting holes are used to mount the NAI device onto a bracket. Brackets are a project-specific design and provided separately. There are three cable GLAN entry points using EMC M20 cable GLANs. If no cable is required, then a blanking plug is placed over the opening. The terminal spring block is inside the junction box. This is located below the device head and protected from water ingress by a waterproof cover. The earthing connection is located on the upper side of the device foot. The light sensor and LED indicator are integrated into one module. The light sensor measures the intensity of the ambient light. If communication from the central system is lost, the light sensor will trigger the device to turn on. The green blinking LED indicator tells you that the device is connected and properly working. Please note that you will only see the green indicator light after the system has been fully commissioned. While they each have the same basic form, each device has a unique head designed for its specific task. Only remove the device from its packaging when you are ready for installation. Open the box from the top. Before the device can be installed, the mounting plate must be precisely positioned using a spirit level. In order to ensure proper functioning of the device, the mounting plate must be aligned in both the X and the Y axis. Any deviation from this must be recorded in the installation plan, indicating the corresponding angle. Make sure that the mounting plate is clean before placing the device on top. Please be aware that cable entry access on the bottom of the device may no longer be accessible after installation on the mounting plate. 
Only bolts, washers, and nuts made of stainless steel suitable for offshore use may be used for mounting NAI products. These are not delivered with the NAI device. Ensure that there is no gap between the device foot and the mounting plate. Insert the bolts only in the four mounting holes with installation sleeves. Ensure that all bolts are straight and hand tighten them crosswise. When installing an NAI device, the junction box will always face inwards towards the tower. You should never have to reach outside the railing to install wiring. This is an indication that you have installed the product incorrectly. The four bolts should be tightened fully in a crosswise manner again at the end. If the NAI device includes a bird spike, remove the blanking plug on the top and attach the bird spike, hand tighten only. The electrical cable can enter the device through one of three locations. Project specifications will determine which entry point to use. Any cable glands that are not required are sealed with the blanking plug. To make the electrical connection, open the junction box and cable gland. It is possible to use shielded braid cables with four or five wires. The correct cable is defined for each project and provided separately. Strip the incoming cable by 10 centimeters, but leave two centimeters of the shielding braid. In order to prevent the shielding braid from fanning out, secure it with adhesive tape. Remove the shielding braid that is not required. Fix the cable in the cable gland by hand. Remove 6 mm of installation on each individual wire. Then connect the wires in the spring terminal block according to the wire diagram. If you have a second cable to connect another device, repeat this process. Please note that a second cable gland is not part of a standard product delivery. When finished, close the junction box and cable gland, making sure that no moisture from rain or fog enters the socket. Tighten the cable gland fully only with a suitable wrench, taking care not to damage the coating on the device housing. When earthing the device, you can either attach an earthing cable with lug directly to the device or to the bracket. This will depend on project specification. Use a connection spray for better function. Fasten the cables together with cable ties. and run them down the bracket to the cable tray. Now your original NAI product is properly installed. Make sure that you are familiar with all project-specific requirements before starting assembly and installation. Use only mounting material suitable for offshore use. Use only appropriate tools for installation. Use only the four insulated mounting holes. Ensure that the junction box is centered and facing the tower. Make sure that no moisture can enter when opening the device. Only use the cables provided by the project for installation. Make sure that unused connection openings are firmly closed with a blanking plug. When closing the junction box, make sure that the seal is intact and that no cables are trapped. 
make sure that the light sensor is not covered by any cables. Make sure you know what type of grounding method is specified and do not deviate from this. Take care that the device coating is not damaged during installation. If, despite all precautions, the housing coating is damaged, it is essential that it is properly sealed. Sabic Offshore, your experts in marking offshore wind farms.